Um, we didn't really talk about our boy though. Um, and, and I don't even know what to, I don't even know to. what to do with him. All right, I'm gonna play the video while we're up play here. I, I don't even know what to do with this. I, here's what I'm gonna say about Kyrie. I, he's boring. Okay, like this stuff is this this nonsense here. And then we're gonna put it up on the screen. There it is in the upper window. Oh wow! Whatever he's this doing, is a new situation, huh? Yeah, I'm put, bringing it up there. It's it. freaking boring. Okay. okay? Whatever he's boring. doing, he's out there on the court. He's burning freaking sage. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. I'm with I, you, John. Listen. I'm not entertained. The thing about Kyrie, this, 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 this is so, like, on brand for Kyrie. This is, like, exactly the type of shit that he would do before a game uh, yes, to, uh, draw, to draw, draw, draw some attention to himself. But then not want to talk. I don't know if he if he's answered a question about it after the game. But it's exactly the type of shit that he does to to make himself part of the story and then act like he doesn't want to be part of the story. And I'll tell you right. what, burning sage, trying to like get rid of the bad vibes and all that stuff. Listen, if you're a guy who needs to burn sage like everywhere, you go, the chances are you're the bad vibe guy. Like the chances are you're the one bringing the bad vibes. If you feel you need to like make this place like a better vibe. Like you're probably bringing the negative energy, buddy. And I, he, Kyrie just seems like that type of guy that, that he needs to do that. And a lot of places that he, that he goes. So not surprised to see it. That being said, banana land move. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I've never seen that in my life. I'm, I've just never seen it. Maybe. I, I, so we, I, this is a, this is where it gets a little bit uncomfortable for me with him because like he toes the line when it comes to Charles like, Charles Barkley you know, said it best, but go on, Bobby. I didn't like what he said. Like the shut up and dribble. I like dribble. what he said. He didn't kind say of, shut up and dribble. He look, he didn't say that up. though. Yeah, that's different. I thought he essentially yeah. did at the end. No, no, I mean, what he said cause. was have a cause and you have a thing to say for social justice or movement, say it. The rest of this right. stuff is just friggin' baloney that you just say to act like you're smarter than people. You're not. You're just a guy. He's basically saying the thing that makes you special is the fact that you do this. You're not on a different plane of like philosophical thinking is what he said. And you're right. It does toe the line because it is eerily reminiscent of the shut up and dribble shit that people were saying when they just wanted LeBron James, who was clearly. But what was that about? That was about something else, John. That was about when LeBron was different. speaking out. Exactly. Yeah, right. He was speaking out about politics and things like that. And people didn't like that. What Kyrie's doing is different. Belitt yeah, exactly. What Kyrie's doing is, you know, putting himself on a pedestal, belittling others, um, you know, just being a yeah. Kind and of I, a I think I think he's and calling himself and calling himself an quote unquote art artist and pawn. Like, dude, and what yeah, Charles Barkley like? Listen, man, shut up and play basketball. Like, that doesn't mean like don't speak your mind on like social justice. It just means like stop coming off as like this like holier than thou human being. Like, and that's we're where just I'm trying to talk guys. basketball here. I'm with you guys on he he warrants criticism and that's what drove me crazy about the media thing like you're it's not that you don't want to talk to the media like I don't care about that aspect of it it's the thinking that he's above criticism whereas other teammates and other people in the room have to go out and answer questions after games about bad plays and what's going on in the room and everything else this looked strange to me at first, but once I heard the whole story that he actually did this before the Brooklyn game at home in his first preseason game, and this does make sense when it comes to his Native American heritage and what he's been ramping up on that side of things. Like, I'm just not in this mode where I'm going to criticize Kyrie for every single thing he does. And the outrage online was just like through the roof. Like, why is he burning sage in a building? They should throw him out the door. Like, this makes sense to me. Like, not everything Kyrie does forevermore is Let bad because he loves Bobby. Nobody's angry. It's Bobby, just, it's just there's common. lots of people in the world who have a lot of traditions in their lives and different things. And when I show up to work, I don't do those things. Like, he's never done it before. He doesn't do it all the time. Why now? What changed? What are you doing? What are we doing? Like, well, I think I, this is fairly like, recent. I, there's lots of stuff I like to do. I just don't do it everywhere, you know? Like... <laughs> Right, like this is, sir, a, this this is, is a, a Wendy's. Like, can you just order and like keep it moving? This is a fairly recent discovery from too. So I like, I just think there's some room for nuance here. Like, we've gone. What so do you far do that with a bunch of freaking like eight year olds in the front row there, like coughing and wheezing? 
It's a fair point, but there wasn't. Like, and now like, you can do this because you're in an empty building and it's a look at me sort of thing. But it's not like this thing that's going to be so important to him that he's going to like insist I have to do this he religious might, freedom. He might do this every night. It might be the new LeBron uh, powder clap before the game and the empty building. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Let, let, I was just going to say, I was just going to compare it somewhat to LeBron's thing, but LeBron's thing, like it's at least somewhat practically puts the powder on his hands. He uses it for the game. Like Kyrie Irving is bringing in some like whatever tradition you want to say, Native American or, you know, hocus pocus, whatever you want to call it, burning sage. Uh, clearly it's good for him. You know, maybe he does it before every game and we, we just notice it because, you know, the cameras are running because it was his return or whatever. But the point is like, it's just, he always wants to do something to make something about him. But then, mm -hmm make you feel like an idiot for bringing it up or talking about it. So that, that that's one of my pet peeves with him. And I thought what Charles Bradley said was completely fine. It was not out of bounds. It was not towing the line of anything. He's saying, hey, listen, man, like, stop acting like you're Mozart or you're Michelangelo. Like, you're a basketball player. That's not to say, like, you're less of a human being. But, like, you know, we're talking about basketball in most cases here. Like, you don't – this isn't a blank canvas and you're – painting the court like with a paintbrush like you're playing basketball you're an athlete that's great that you are you're one of the best in the, in, in all of the world like there's nothing wrong with that but like let's talk basketball Barkley said we're not teachers you dribble a basketball stop acting like you're the smartest person in the world felt a little belittling that's how he that. comes off that's how he comes yeah. off though you don't think he comes off as, as he's belittling people have you ever called someone a pawn before have you referred to anything you do in your life art <laughs> anything hey, whatever you're uh, whatever you're good at my liberal arts degree that's it this isn't, this isn't jokingly belittling his talent he's freaking incredible at what he does but like how pretentious do you have to be to refer to anything in the world that you do as your art you know as if it's not actually art you're playing a game it's fun and you're good at it that's great art pawns <laughs> sage like, what are we doing? Where, what level of lunacy have we ascended to? There's a similar level of lunacy. Wait, to, where do you draw the line? There's a similar level of lunacy to think that that sage was going to burn down TD Garden, though, the way people no, were talking no, about it. Right <laughs> actually, nobody actually was upset about yeah. that. I mean, I'm Italian. Am I going to have That's like, a like, violation. That's, that's <laughs> Call the fire marshal. <laughs> We have the feast of Saint Anthony come rolling through the TD Garden because yeah, I'm an Italian. Right I, I, you know, I'm Marco <laughs> Bellinelli. It's, it's like, what is what is this? You know what I mean? Like, like John said, like you show up and you go to work. Like we're trying to play a basketball game here, man. Like it's it's not that serious. That's why I think yeah, it borders. Tatum, if I, if if I'm Jason Tatum, if I was that kind of leader, and hopefully he is, or maybe he'll bring this up at least to a few of his teammates. But like, hey, he did that before the game. He went off on us. So did Kevin Durant. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. They all hugged him. They were all hugging him before the game. Say, if I'm Jason Tatum, I'm, I'm going to tell my teammates that because everyone else is going to be like, I don't think they're going. I don't think they're the kind of teammates that going to look at Jason Tatum and be like, why? Why do you talk to that guy? I don't think that's the case. But I think it's obviously a level of respect. But if I'm Tatum, I'm turning around and saying, hey, that, I respect this guy. But at the same time, we need to next time he comes here, we need to show him how good we really are. All right, this is preseason. Next time, we'll see. We'll see what what kind of team he, he'll see. Here at TD Garden, like you have to use it as motivation. I, I don't think what he did was disrespectful, but it's just like I think John no. said that it's just boring. Like I'm not entertained right now, it's and, and nor nor do I think this motivates his teammates. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is Kyrie trying to be the leader that he thinks everyone else wants him to be. I don't, I, it's, I don't know. It's not. It's not disrespectful. It's just. It's just as simple as you come off as a douche, like way more than you should, man. And it's like it's it's really not more serious than that. Like if you just feel like just you know, be normal, I guess. If, I mean, if, if there's such thing as being normal, but like, just come off less like entitled and like high and mighty. And like, people might actually like not tr try to look to criticize you so much. I think you all can criticize him for some, I think you can criticize him for some things. And I think this moment and the Barkley moment went a little bit over the top to where this guy can just be blasted for anything and everything he does at this point, especially for like, you know, from our perspectives, it's going to be easy. It's always going to be easy forever more. I know, but that's the thing is you're not telling a guy to be quiet and keep your opinions to themselves. You're just, Barkley was just saying, don't be such a douche. That's, that's, that's all he was saying. That's you know? it. And honestly, that's a good life lesson in anything in life. Anybody like, watching, dude, like, don't seriously, be such a douche. Get over yourself. That's all yeah, he was saying. Because Charles has spoken out about a lot of political stuff. You know, it, obviously he's not one to tell 
uh, uh, an athlete that you can't speak up politically about things. I just, I just think obviously Kyrie's approach is a little different than we're accustomed to seeing, you know, past athletes in the past right. address political issues. Well, it's a different kind of statement too. I mean, people like this, this one really rings differently to me too. And it is a recent development with him, the whole native American heritage. Oh thing. This my isn't God. You hear about no, as much. Like, he did the Enough. Thanksgiving. He did the F Thanksgiving thing before. That was, that was two years ago. That's not that long ago. Th three, two. I think. Two. Anyway. And that, uh, yeah. We got, two we, got Kyrie Irving, we got the Kyrie Irving PR team on, on the call with us. No, I'm just – I've never been I, – I, since day one in his league, I've said this guy's overrated. So I'm not the biggest Kyrie Irving fan in the world. I just think sometimes we go to the extreme with this criticism of him. Oh, but, listen, I mean, on the court tonight, he spoke he, – he made a statement in its own right. Like, exactly. He, he's back, he's You're fresh, he's healthy, and he meshed.